I did last time. And it just never ended. Oh, aha, I'm live. Go away, Max. Okay. It, last time it didn't work, so I'm so excited. Okay, how do I look? Look good? Oh, okay, I thought it stopped. Hi, Mrs. Phillips here, sixth grade lit and language teacher. And I started something new this year, so you seventh graders in Mrs. Hansen's fourth period computer class. Woo woo. Um, haven't, don't know about this, but it's called First Chapter Friday. And every Friday, I read a chapter from a book that I know is really good. And then at 325, it's up for grabs. So today's book, which I'm going to now share with you, is The Maze Runner. And I know a number of you are fans, so feel free to talk about it over in the chat, which none of you are doing, or somehow I don't have access to it. So if you are watching, say hi. So I know that that chat part works because we're testing this out for something that's happening in the future. Okay, so this is The Maze Runner. Oh, yay, hi, Lauren. Thank you. Okay. The Maze Runner by James Dashner. Chapter one. He began, should I have like the book? Like, how should I hold the book? Tell me. Should I hold it so you can see it? Do you want to see just my eyes? Do you want to see all of me? Are you embarrassed of me yet? I think I'm awesome. Chapter one. He began his new life. Oh, look at all of you. Jeez, Tony, hi. He began his new life standing up, surrounded by cold darkness and stale, dusty air. Metal ground against metal. A lurching shudder shook the floor beneath him. He fell down at the sudden movement and shuffled backward his hands and feet, drops of sweat beating on his forehead despite the cool air. His back struck a hard metal wall. He slid along it until he hit the corner of the room. Sinking to the floor, he pulled his legs up tight against his body, hoping his eyes would soon adjust to the darkness. With another jolt, the room jerked upward like an old lift in a mine shaft. Harsh sounds of chains and pulleys, like the workings of an ancient steel factory, echoed through the room, bouncing off the walls with a hollow, tinny whine. The lightless elevator swayed back and forth as it ascended, turning the boy's stomach sour with nausea. A smell like burnt oil invaded his senses, making him feel worse. He wanted to cry, but no tears came. He could only sit there, alone, waiting. My name is Thomas, he thought. That, that was the only thing he could remember about his life. He didn't understand how this could be possible. His mind functioned without flaw, trying to calculate his surroundings and predicament. Knowledge flooded his thoughts facts and images, memories and details of the world and how it works. What? Can you see the comments? Yeah, but I can't see the comments and read at the same time. Oh. Right? I love you all, but I can't respond to you while I'm reading. He pictured, so, am I supposed to be responding? Is that, what are you doing? Uh, I just want to be in the thing. <laughs> He pictured snow on trees running down a leaf-strewn road, eating a hamburger, the moon casting a pale glow on a grassy meadow, swimming in a lake, a busy city square with hundreds of people bustling about their business. Leo. And yet he didn't know where he came from or how he'd gotten inside the dark lift or who his parents were. He didn't even know his last name. Images of people flashed across his mind, but there was no recognition. Their faces replaced with haunted smears of color. He couldn't think of one person he knew or recall a single conversation. The room continued its ascent, swaying. Thomas grew immune to the ceaseless rattling of the chains that pulled him upward. A long time passed. Minutes stretched into hours, although it was impossible to know for sure, because every second seemed an eternity. No, he was smarter than that. Trusting his instincts, he knew he'd been moving for roughly half an hour. Strangely enough, he felt his fear whisked away like a swarm of gnats caught in the wind, replaced by an intense curiosity. He wanted to know where he was and what was happening. With a groan and then a clonk, the rising room, the sudden change jolted Thomas from his huddled position and threw him across the hard floor. As he scrambled to his feet, he felt the room sway less and less until it finally stilled. Everything fell silent. A minute passed. Two. He looked in every direction but saw only darkness. He felt along the walls again, searching for a way out. But there was nothing, only the cool metal. He groaned in frustration. His echo amplified through the air like the haunted moan of death. It faded and silence returned. He screamed, called for help, pounded on the walls with his fists. Nothing. Thomas backed into the corner once again, folded his arms and shivered, and the fear returned. He felt a worrying shudder in his chest as if his heart wanted to escape, to flee his body. Someone help me, he screamed. Each word ripped his throat raw. A loud clank rang out above him and he sucked in a startled breath as he looked up. A straight line of light appeared across the ceiling of the room and Thomas watched as it expanded. A heavy grating sound revealed double sliding doors being forced open. After so long in darkness, the light stabbed his eyes. 
He looked away, covering his face with both hands. He heard noises above, voices, and fear squeezed his chest. Look at him. How old is he? Looks like a clunk in a t-shirt. You're the clunk, shuck face. Dude, it smells like feet down there. Hope you enjoy the one-way trip, Greeny. Ain't no ticket back, bro. Thomas was hit with a wave of confusion, blistered with panic. The voices were odd, tinged with echo. Some of the words were completely foreign, others felt familiar. He willed his eyes to adjust as he squinted toward the light and those speaking. At first he could see only shifting shadows, but they soon turned into the shapes of bodies. People bending over the hole in the ceiling, looking down at him, pointing. And then as if the lens of a camera had sharpened its focus, the faces cleared. They were boys, all of them, some young, some older. Thomas didn't know what he'd expected, but seeing those faces puzzled him. They were just teenagers, kids. Some of his fear melted away, but not enough to calm his racing heart. Someone lowered a rope from above, the end of it tied into a big loop. Thomas hesitated, then stepped into it with his right foot and clutched the rope as he was yanked toward the sky. Hands reached down, lots of hands, grabbing him by his clothes, pulling him up. The world seemed to spin, a swirling mist of faces and color and light. A storm of emotions wrenched his gut, twisted and pulled. He wanted to scream, thr cry, throw up. The chorus of voices had grown silent but someone spoke as they yanked him over the sharp edge of the dark box. And Thomas knew he'd never forget the words. Nice to meet you, the boy said. Welcome to the Glade. The Maze Runner, thanks for helping me figure out how to go live, seventh grade, love you. Oh, wait, no, I don't wanna end yet because I forgot. At the end, I'm supposed to say, I'm gonna try to go live tomorrow at the varsity football game at nine o'clock. So tune in. Now I'm going to end.